Blast from the grassroots, connecting people and sharing ideas. Hi, this is Arlene. Okay. Hi, this is Gauri. And you're listening to Durian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. That's right. And today is uh, Monday. And of course, we have our uh, weekly arrangement with uh, Eco Nights. And we have Kenny uh, Levy, who is joining us all the way from Bali, who is an uh, environmental education consultant. So we're going to say hi to him. Hi, Kenny. Hi there. Hi, Hello. how are you? It's great. Yeah, it's great. Very nice here. Great weather in Bali. So how long you have been there, stationed there? Um, I just moved to Bali in December, but mm-hmm. before that I lived in Kuala Lumpur for about 14 years. So I'm new to Bali, but I've been in this region for a while. Uh-huh. So uh, in accordance to uh, KLEFF, I understand you are conducting a workshop, is that right? Right, right. I'll be reading my children's book called The Box People mm-hmm. and trying to get parents and kids it's to realize they need to go outside and explore nature. And your workshop is called Get Out of Your Box. Um, the book is called The Box People. Mm-hmm. And the message is basically to get out of your box, to get out of the concrete jungle and go mm-hmm. out and explore nature. So what's the story of The Box People? Sounds interesting. <clears throat> yeah, basically... These people, called the box people, live in a very modern society where they're always plugged into electronics. They always have some sort of computer. Their houses are shaped like boxes. Their food comes from a box. Um, They live in boxes, but they never realize they need to be connected to nature until one day, one of the characters, he gets really tired of living his life in a box, Mm -hmm. and he decides to go outside and explore nature And then he actually falls in love with nature and he feels much happier and much more content. And then, you know, at first the box people are really skeptical. They're they're kind of like, why would we leave our comfortable modern box city? Mm -hmm. But as soon as they get outside and start playing, they they get happy, they get healthy, and they realize they need to really connect with nature more often. So the whole theme is to get out of your boxes and go outside and play. So the box is a metaphor for um, technology and also for uh, the modern cities. Yes, exactly. So, you know, in the story, the boxes are basically like our condominiums, our cars, our aircon malls, Mm -hmm. um, the laptops that we use, the phones that we use, all of those are the boxes. So um, uh, was this book written by, by you? Yes, I wrote the book. Actually, I wrote the book in, I think, 1997 or 1996. Okay. But I didn't publish it until this year. I, I had a friend illustrate it for me. His name is Callan. And Callan uh, did all the watercolors and all the illustrations in 1999. And the book actually sat on my shelf for 15 years. Wow. Waiting for me to publish it. So <laughs> in December, I published the book. <laughs> It's kind of hard for me to believe you wrote it in 1996 because back then uh, people were not were not really like that, were they? They were not too attached to their computers because computers were still uh, very new back then. But you actually kind of saw into the future. Yeah, actually, I never thought of it that way. <laughs> but you're right. Uh-huh. I, you know, I was actually when I wrote it, I was in uh, in an industrial town in Germany, and mm-hmm. I was in university, and I I was just. It was winter time and it was really cold and I couldn't really go outside and play and all the everything around me was factories and big right. buildings hmm. and I just felt really cramped and cooped up inside this big box and I couldn't go outside. So yeah, I guess you're right. I it wasn't really like that, but mm-hmm. it's definitely gotten more and more like that right. these days. And uh you published your book uh was it in Kuala Lumpur? Well, it's an interesting thing. I it's it's called print on demand. So the publishers are in the United States, mm-hmm. but when you order it, they print it at wherever you're based on wherever you're located. So say for example, if you, you order it and you're based in Malaysia, they mm-hmm. might print it in the UK or in Australia because they have print houses. And so it'll be shipped from the nearest location to you. So it's mm-hmm 
print on demand. It's basically an online self-publishing format. And is it available in hard copy or is it uh, in a digital format? It's both. So you can get the printed edition or you mm -hmm. can download the Kindle version or an ebook format. So it's it's pretty handy that way, I think. Mm -hmm. it's pretty mm -hmm. nice. Do you do you I do you do you have the book translated in local languages in Southeast Asia? At the moment I don't. I it's only in English, but what I've done is I've read it to some school groups in Indonesia as well as Malaysia and I read it in English and then I can translate some of it in Bahasa. Oh, you can speak Bahasa. Boleh <laughs> sedikit. <laughs> so, w the problem is when I yeah. translate it into Bahasa, it loses the rhyming scheme. I'm not quite good enough to rhyme in Bahasa. So, <laughs> the English version rhymes a little bit like the Dr. Mm. Seuss books, but translating to Bahasa, it kind of lo it loses the rhyme, but the kids still get the main message of going outdoors and playing in, in nature. So this workshop is uh, specifically for kids. Well, it's actually, you know, I think really good children's books mm -hmm. are meant for adults mm -hmm. and kids at the same time. And the message is to go outside and play. And it's definitely illustrated for kids, but I think the message is aimed at adults. Like, you need to get your kids outdoors. You need to go outside and play. Unplug from your electronics mm -hmm. and go outdoors and get jump into nature. Right. And um, do, do you have uh, any any kids? Do I? Yeah. I'm sorry. What? Yes, I, I do. I have one two-year-old daughter. Uh -huh. So uh, have you read the book to her and, and try to uh, send, send, get the message across? I have. Um, and I think I'll keep doing that for mm -hmm. many times because I think it, you have to hear that message quite a lot, I think. So uh, tell me more about your workshop. How, how are you going to conduct it? Uh, does it uh, only comprise of the book reading or are you going to have other activities for the parents and kids as well? What I plan to do mm -hmm. is, is read the book and talk about the message behind the book, mm -hmm. but also show some real life examples of the boxes that we live in and mm -hmm. how we've created these boxes. And then after that, try to get parents to see that there's places they can go and ways they can get their their kids outdoors playing outside more out of the air-conditioned malls mm -hmm. and outside in nature a bit more so hopefully I'll have a book reading and then show some concrete examples and then discuss mm -hmm. ways to get people outside and then hopefully also do a book signing at the end uh, do you plan to actually take the kids and the parents outside and do some activities with them? Well, the irony is we're going to be mm. at a big mall. We're going to be at Publica oh, so, okay. and, and Mankiar. So I won't be able to take them outdoors, mm -hmm. but I'll definitely get that message across. And there's places you know, in KL and throughout Malaysia where you can definitely go mm. and get outside a lot more. And uh, how is this your first time being involved with uh, KLEFF? No, I was I was at CLEF last year, and what I spoke about last year was another project I did mm -hmm. in 2012. My friend Jamie and I rode bicycles mm -hmm. that were made out of bamboo from Thailand to Bali. Right. And so we were called Green Riders, and the Green Riders was to raise awareness for conservation in, in Southeast Asia, all the way from Thailand through Malaysia, Singapore, and Indonesia. And uh, as an education consultant yourself, what uh, uh, there must be some environmental causes that you are personally passionate about, so maybe you want to talk about some of those? Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's a big issue in, in both Malaysia and Indonesia is deforestation and habitat loss and that's happening because of huge palm oil plantations and land development and that's leading to a lot of the endangered species like the orangutans, the elephants, mm -hmm. um, okay. rhinos, different monkeys, birds. So yeah, I, I really work a lot with the deforestation okay. and just educating people about that. And how, how do you go about doing that? Do you speak to different organizations? Or do you write about it? K 
can you repeat that question? That was breaking up. Okay. I'm sorry. How do you go about um, uh, talking to these people? Do you actually go and have a conversation, or do you write about it? How do you um, spread the the awareness? Well, I, I do a little bit of, of all that. What I mostly do is I take students on field trips to okay. national parks and to see the the animals, like the orangutans, mm -hmm. and just. A couple of days ago, I took students out, and we saw a really rare bird called the Bali starling. Mm -hmm. So I take them out on these field trips so they can see it, but then we also see the habitat loss. We see the palm oil plantations, and we see what's happening. And then we talk to the local villagers, and we see what mm -hmm. their concerns are and their needs. And if we're lucky, sometimes we're able to get involved with fundraising or education or awareness raising by getting the students to write about it or write their blogs or make videos or take photos. Mm -hmm. So education is definitely what I think, you know, is the key, getting young people aware of the issues and getting them involved and especially to take action to do something. So what are you actually doing in Bali at the moment? Well, I just moved here uh -huh. and I'm setting up in terms of networking with different schools and different uh, projects. but working still as an educational consultant so I'm, I'm taking students from all over Southeast Asia to different places to see sea turtles, to see orangutans, to see birds mm -hmm. and Bali just seems to be a good base for that right now, it's a good spot for me to be. And uh, maybe you want to also share with us what are the issues that uh, Bali is facing uh, environmentally? Yeah, it's it's not a lot different than many places. There's mm -hmm. a big issue here with plastic and plastic bags and plastic bottles and polluting beaches. But there's also a big issue going on right now where they want to do a land reclamation in one of the bays here mm -hmm. near the airport and basically take down the mangroves and fill in the land and build more tourist attractions and uh Obviously, there's some environmental impact if you develop a huge bay in the mangrove forest and you plop big development on top of that. There's going to be some environmental issues and some ramifications. So the big ones are the plastics, the plastic bottles and bags that are just washing up on the beaches, mm -hmm. as well as the habitat loss and the land development. And uh, have you spoken to uh, anyone uh, to find out what are they doing about it? Or what are the local authorities? How are they going to address this problem? You know, I really haven't yet. Not mm -hmm. here in Bali. Okay. Um, I'm just now getting settled in, and I, I haven't really met the folks. But right. I have read the papers, and I have seen some of the action they're taking, mm -hmm. and hopefully they'll make some progress. But I personally haven't gotten, I haven't met the people yet. I haven't been here long enough to oh, okay. network with everyone. And also as an uh, edu education consultant, you focus more on uh, using the educational approach, especially for kids and all. Uh, what other um, things that you do? Um, I do teacher workshops and training to get teachers involved in outdoor education and environmental education. Um, so basically teaching teachers more mm -hmm. so that they can use those the tools they learn in the workshop to take their students outdoors because mm -hmm. I really firmly believe you can't really understand the environment unless you go out in the environment. You got to go out and see it. Mm -hmm. um, as well as writing my books like The Box People and uh, mm -hmm. I've written a couple of other books on environmental education to try to get people aware mm -hmm. of what's going on and get them involved. And uh, have you uh, done any work in any other countries besides Malaysia and uh, Indonesia? Yeah, the, the main places I work are Thailand, mm -hmm. and I do some trips there and the north of Thailand when, and Chiang Mai as well as South Thailand. And we do some mangrove restoration projects there where we plant mangroves in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And also just last year, me and three other teachers, we paddled kayaks around Phuket Island. So we we paddled around the entire island and made a documentary series on marine conservation issues. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot going on. We're, we, we're trying to, to raise a lot of awareness and get people involved. And apart from KLEFF, are you working on um, anything else? Yeah. Um, like I said earlier, trying to get more teachers. So we're, right. we're just now starting to talk about global citizenship and what that means and how can you become a global citizen 
meaning you're aware of the global issues and you're doing something with your own life to make a difference to remedy those global issues. So we're just now starting to think about a global a citizenship summit, maybe here in Bali, where we get teachers from around the region to come and talk about what it means to be a global citizen, how do we become aware of the global issues, and what actions can we take mm-hmm. to remedy those global issues and, and have a more sustainable future. And how did you actually uh, came to know about KLEFF? Um, well, Yasmin is mm-hmm. a good friend of mine, oh, and we've okay. done some projects together for environmental education. Mm-hmm. And so she read my book, and she really liked it, and she wanted me to come and give a reading at CLEF. So I was, I was really excited she invited me to do that. Mm-hmm. So Eco Nights is doing a lot of great work around Malaysia. And so I was really happy, you know, when I first met Yasmin that we became friends and we collaborated on some projects because mm. they're doing some really good stuff. Uh, maybe you want to share with us what are some of the projects you worked on together? Yeah, um, I think two years ago now we worked on a project called Rockin' for the Reefs. Mm-hmm. And it was basically a concert was with that in different Malaysia? musicians. It was in Malaysia. Mm-hmm. In fact, it was at Publica. Okay. Um, so we had different musicians come and play music, and we had different NGOs come and set up uh, booths, kind of like a festival, to teach the public about coral reefs. Mm-hmm. And the, the bands did some fundraising, and we, we got some money to sponsor. We actually sponsored a coral reef educational camp on Tiamen Island. And that year, it was a partnership with myself, uh, Earth Matters, Eco Nights, uh, Reef Check Malaysia, and Go International. So all four of us collaborated and made that event work. And I think we raised something like 15,000 ringgit oh, wow. for conservation and education. So the whole thing was a cultural and musical festival to raise awareness for conservation. So it's, mm-hmm. it's called Rockin' for the Environment. Mm-hmm. It was a great project. And that's how I met Yasmin. And it, it was great to work with her and the, the other Eco Nights folks as well as Reef Check and, and Go International. And uh, how, how long were you actually living in KL? I moved to KL in the year 2000, so about 14 years. About 14 years? Yes. So uh, I'm sure you must have noticed something about the uh, environmental issues that we're facing here. So uh, is, were, were there anything that you, you want to highlight? Yeah, I, I think it's it's lot a lot like a lot of... Uh, Asian cities with mm-hmm. the plastic and the, the, the pollution on the, the side of the road, the trash. Mm-hmm. But what I particularly noticed was the dirty waterways. Um, you know, if you go downtown mm-hmm. where the Klang and the, the Gombak rivers meet, right? it's near, near uh, Pasar City, near Chinatown. It's really dirty. And that's what Kuala Lumpur was named after. It was named after the, the, the confluence mud. of those two rivers. <laughs> yeah. And those two rivers are really dirty. So uh, to me, that's a big irony when mm-hmm. your city is named after two rivers, but the rivers are so polluted that they're not very useful for much. Right. And uh, any, anything else besides that one? Maybe uh, in terms of, of well, pollution? Well, I'm sure or... if you've been through KL, you yeah. know. The, uh, uh, yeah, what I was going to say, the other big one, I'm sure if, it, you know, if you've been through KL, you've noticed the traffic and the need for more public transportation as well as safe mm-hmm. bicycle lanes for more sustainable transportation um, just to get the cars off the road because mm-hmm. kale is horrible during rush hour. <laughs> right. So did you uh, take the public transportation a lot when, when you were here? Did I? What? No, I'm sorry. Did you use the uh, public transportation when you were in KL? I didn't because where I lived it wasn't nearby, but I, I rode a motorbike, which ah, I think... okay. It's a little bit better than a big car. So I, I didn't use much petrol. I, I used less than, you know, three or four liters a week. So mm-hmm. I think that's better than a big uh, car that's, that's drinking lots of fuel, drinking lots of gasoline. Mm-hmm. And uh, also uh, to talk about the environmental scene here, uh, what are some of the things that um, you wish probably that could be improved or could be could be better? In, in, 
KL in Malaysia? Uh, yeah, in KL. Well, you know, one thing, and I think this is hitting home at the moment, is right. the haze right. and the burning of the palm oil plantations coming throughout Indonesia. But also, there's a lot of burning taking place in peninsular Malaysia. I was really lucky one day. My friend invited me to fly in a helicopter with him from KL to, to Johor Bahru, and I counted hundreds and hundreds of fires mm -hmm. along the way and just realized it's not all coming from Indonesia. It's not all coming from Sumatra, but there's a lot of burning and a lot of haze being generated right in the peninsula. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are almost actually at the end of our segment, so I uh, just want to ask you, what is the message that you hope to get across uh, by conducting the, the workshop at, at CLEF this year? Well, I think it's a pretty simple message. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think we need to really take care of the planet we live on. Mm -hmm. But I think before you can love the planet, before you can love it and take care of it, you need to go outside. You need to experience it. You need to get out of the malls, out of the cars, out of the air conditioning and out, off of your laptops and phones mm -hmm. and go outside and play. Mm -hmm. And once you start playing outside, you realize it's a pretty cool place. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty cool planet. And I want to take care of it. So I think my message is simple. Mm -hmm. Go outside and explore. And, and when you explore, then you really come to love mm -hmm. nature. And once you love nature, you want to protect it. But what about people who think that, you know, that's not my job. I don't have to take care of the environment because there are, there are other people who, who can do that. And I just have to focus on my life and being comfortable. Yeah, I, I think those kind of people exist. Mm -hmm. But I think my message to them is we all share this planet. We all breathe the same oxygen we all need the same food we all drink the same water mm -hmm. and there's seven billion of us here now and we need to learn to each take our individual action to, to for preservation and conservation and take care of the earth because if you leave it up to someone else then it may not happen but if you take action yourself then something will definitely happen i think we all need to take individual responsibility for preservation and conservation of the earth of the planet And any uh, last message for all our listeners out there who are listening? Yeah, I just I hope everyone goes outside and plays and mm -hmm. explores and learns to love nature. And I, I hope I see some some of you at the reading for the box people at, at right. the KL Eco Film Festival. So when is that happening exactly? Um, mine is on October 19th. 19th. But the Eco Film Festival mm -hmm. is the 17th through the 19th of October. Right. So yours is on the 19th in Publica, right? Yeah. Yes. And uh, entrance is uh, free? Entrance for the film festival is free, but uh, if no, you want to come your, to my workshop, yeah. my workshop is 25 ringgit because you get a copy of the book oh, and I'll okay. autograph it for you. Okay. <laughs> right. So thank you very much, Kenny, for joining us this morning and uh, sharing uh, your thoughts and insights on the current uh, environmental issues and also about your book. Yes. Thank so, you, too. I really appreciate it. It's, it's an honor to be on your show. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. See you around. Thanks.